Jurassic Park 1 is pretty cool in my opinion. There's so many reviews of this movie. Is there even a point of making a video for this? Jurassic Park was groundbreaking, so unique, CG this, practical effects that. It's been said and done. Why watch a video of another person saying the same thing that many others have said? I thought long and hard if I should even review this movie, but I thought it through. I made my mind, and here I am talking about this movie. So everything everyone said on these reviews, I, I'm, I'm gonna say it all over again and make you guys suffer. I'm gonna try to review this movie through how I saw it. Not only am I gonna talk about this movie, but I'm going to talk about all six of the Jurassic Park movies in honor of Jurassic World Dominion being released. I'm also going to be ranking these movies at the end of each review, and by the end, the list will be complete. So, sit down for a bit, grab a drink, cause this is Paul Atrox's Jurassic Park review. In 1990, Michael Crichton wrote and released his novel, Jurassic Park. The novel was a big hit, and people loved it. I mean, I can't blame those guys. It was thrilling, philosophical, suspenseful, and most importantly, fun to read through. Steven Spielberg saw this and was like, I don't agree. Yes, sir. And decided to make the novel into a movie. Filming was shot from August to November in 1992. And by the summer of 93, the movie was ready to be seen by the world. The movie starts off with pretty eerie music, and we see a crate being brought into a holding pen. But something goes wrong, and one of the workers named Joffrey is attacked by a raptor. And Muldoon tries to save the worker, but he gives in and takes a nap. We see Donald Gennaro in his epic debut, and I'm gonna say it right off the bat, Donald Gennaro in this movie is pretty nerfed compared to his book counterpart. His book character was awesome and diddled the raptor with his own fist. In this one, his character is just a nuisance. Still cool, but when you read the novel, you'll just look at this and be saddened. So, Gennaro is sent to see if the park is acting pretty sus or not. After that whole shtick, we go to the Badlands of Montana, where we see these bozos digging up some raptor bones. But then this boy, who people really made theories about this kid being Owen Grady, goes, Yeah, this raptor is like two inches or some turkeys. Mans, have you not seen Thanks Killing 3? That movie made me quiver in my Doc Martens. Don't worry though, our main character of the movie, Dr. Alan Grant, played by Sam Neill, traumatizes the little bastard by telling him that raptors would f*** him up in a 1v1 bodies. Alan Grant is my favorite character of the whole franchise. I can relate to him, and a lot of kids growing up who ended up being paleontologists were inspired by Alan Grant. Alan Grant and his paleobotanist girlfriend, Ellie Sattler, head to their trailer, only to find Richard Attenborough snooping through their fridge. You piece of shit, you can't just break in and do that shit, that's pretty illegal. I own an island, off the coast of Costa Rica. I've leased it from the government and I've spent the last five years setting up a kind of biological preserve. Really spectacular, spared no expense. Uh, sure, but I mean- you by fully funding your dig. And this is a very unusual time for a further three years. We cut to that one guy from Seinfeld playing Dennis Nedry, and I'm gonna say this, and I don't think anyone ever says it, but Nedry is a great example of an antagonist. Not all antagonists have to be evil and do really horrible shit. He does what he's meant to do, stop the characters from achieving something they want. In this case, it's getting the characters to turn off the power in the park to get help. But Nedry isn't like, oh, I'm gonna kill all of you and take over or whatever. He's just like, hey, look, I wanna get paid and do my thing, that's all. But who's paying him? This guy right here. Dodson, Dodson, we've got Dodson here! Louis Dodson, he works for Biosyn, a rival company to John Hammond's engine, which is a genetics company, by the way. He's trying to have Nedry steal some stuff by being sneaky and putting it in a Barbasol can. Yeah, Nedry agrees with how ridiculous and awesome that sounds. So, uh oh, Nedry is gonna be up to no good in this movie. Anyways, back to this bit. We have Hammond, Gennaro, Sattler, and Grant on this helicopter heading to Isla Nublar, which means Cloud Island in Spanish. Isla Nublar is the island where Hammond has the park for all those people to inspect. 
and he also brought Jeff Goldblum. Best movie ever. Ian Malcolm in this movie is seriously the best thing ever, I swear. Like, his, like, funny, just, like, F-boy type attitude, it's funny. I, I don't know how to explain it. it. It's just amazing. Too bad he isn't like, like this in the lost world. He clearly tries to get it on with Hammond, but it doesn't go too well. They get to the park and drive off to a field. And then we get this. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the best scenes in film history. Truly a monumental scene. And definitely my favorite movie scene of all time. The music and everyone's reactions makes it feel like we are there with them seeing a real life dinosaur. This is our first look at a dinosaur in the whole franchise. The Brachiosaurus. This scene makes me tear up from the nostalgia. And another reason that I will touch on at the end of this review marathon. I will say, although the scene in Brachiosaurus CG is impeccable, there's something off about the Brachiosaurus CG in this. But besides that, I really love this scene. We then get to the visitor center where we are shown how the dinosaurs were made. And then we are introduced to the lab where they create the dinosaurs. Hey yo, what you erasing there? This is Dr. Henry Wu. He isn't a big character in this movie until the fourth installment. Much like Dachshund, he's a prominent part of the lore and the overall story of the series. He shows our heroes the birth of a velociraptor. <laughs> uh, me and my brother would always joke about the lines Hammond says here. Push! Push! This raptor always made me feel weird too. I don't know if it's the noises it makes or the animatronic being used, but it's just odd. They end up all going to see the raptor pen we saw in the beginning of the movie. And we are fully introduced to Robert Muldoon, the park's game warden. He explains how they imported some raptors, but one of them is being There were originally There were originally eight raptors that were bred, but the big one, as Muldoon calls it, left two of her Fortnite squad members alive. Perfect timing, cause it's feeding time, and you can hear the cow just being torn apart by these things. And once the thing is levered back and everything is gone and torn, it's just another hint that these things are not something you want to mess with. Not only is it lunchtime for the raptors, but now lunchtime for the cast. This is where the cast starts to question whether this park should even have dinosaurs, cause bad things could happen. Dinara also starts to talk about how the park could earn lots of money by making it expensive, but Hammond is like, nah, everyone is gonna get to go to this park. They finish lunch, I think they don't even touch their food, and head back to the main lobby of the visitor center, where we are introduced to Hammond's grandchildren, Lex and Tim. Tim is a huge dinosaur enthusiast, while Lex is a computer hacker. So now we complete our earthbound party, and it's time for the tour. Grant really hates children though, so he now has to endure this whole trip with them. They pass by their first stop with the Dilophosaurus pen and find nothing. There's no dinosaurs. But then they arrive at another stop where we see the T-Rex paddock, but still, nothing. But then Alan jumps out of the vehicle and Ellie follows while leaving Malcolm there, alone. Everyone eventually follows and we see veterinarian Jerry Harding tending to a sick Triceratops. This Triceratops is my second favorite animatronic in this movie. It's huge! And I also like the breathing mechanic in this animatronic. A storm is coming and the whole staff has to be evacuated so everyone decides to head back but Ellie decides to stay and check on the trike. Nedry ends up shutting down the system and finally takes some dino embryos. I'm gonna say this from the point of view of a person who wants to be an actor. When he tells everyone that he's gonna head out to get snacks, it is priceless and all that acting in this movie feels so natural and it's beautiful. Wade Knight stuttering and lying to them is so hilarious to me and just inspires me. We end up cutting to Malcolm and Alan having a conversation about kids and Ian just straight up asks Alan if Ellie's available. What a Sigma male. Thankfully that awkward convo stopped cause the Ford Explorer stopped as well and the fences are now down. We see Nedry trying to head to the dogs with the Barbasol can but his dumbass crashes and gets lost. The scene cuts back to the Ford Explorers and we see the T-Rex has eaten the goat. 
Gennaro leaves the kids behind out of fear. I've heard people say Gennaro didn't deserve to die in this movie, but I mean he's a pure wimp. He left the kids behind. Here I say he did deserve to die in this movie. The T-Rex ends up escaping and we get to see the whole T-Rex. This scene is just pure suspense. The T-Rex knocks over the car with Lex and Tim screaming, the Rex destroying Malcolm and killing Gennaro, and of course the Rex knocking over the explorer off the moat. This is my second favorite scene in film history. Muldoon is sent to go find Lex and Tim while Ellie tags along. Nedry gets his jeep stuck and finds a Dilophosaurus. Rewatching this scene is actually fun and in some sort of way comedic. Nedry treating the Dilophosaurus like a dog and the slipping cartoon noise that plays when he slips is just genius. Nedry ends up getting sprayed with venom and is blinded by the dino and gets killed in the car. This is pretty tame compared to his death in the novel. I won't explain what happens as I really can't explain it on here. Plus, it would ruin the experience for first time readers. Let's just say it's really harsh and brutal. After struggles and close calls, Grant gets Tim off of the tree from where he was pushed off by Rexy, the T-Rex. Yes, that's actually her name. Anyways, Muldoon and Ellie find an injured Ian Malcolm and take him with them. They try to find Alan and the kids, but the T-Rex ends up chasing them, but they end up escaping. Alan and the kids end up resting up on a tree for the night, as Alan grows to finally like kids. Once they wake up, they end up feeding a sick Brachiosaurus. Um, I'm assuming it's also from the Lysine thing, I don't know. So they end up getting off the tree and find raptor eggs, proving Malcolm's point he made earlier in the movie about life finding a way. Homies just switched teams and were like, I, I'm a guy now. Arnold is sent to the maintenance shed, but he, he, uh, he dies. From this point forward, the movie is just a train filled with thrills and suspense. The Gallimimus stampede, and Ellie being sent to the maintenance shed to reboot the park. And in there, we get our first look at the Velociraptors in the movie, completely. The music that plays and the noises they make are just intimidating and make me want to go dookie in my booty shorts. The raptors end up killing Muldoon, Ellie escapes and reunites with Grant, and the kids end up staying in the dining area of the place and just start munching. But uh oh, the raptors break in. The kitchen scene is also a great scene and makes the viewer feel claustrophobic. It also adds that feeling like if you move or make any sound, you are done for. Lex, Grant, Tim, and Ellie end up in the control room where the raptor tries to get in. Then they try to get the gun, but they can't. Uh, Tim, can you go get them the gun? They kind of need it. No? Uh, alright then. They turn the power back on in the park and run away from the raptors until they reach the lobby where the T-Rex comes and saves them. Hammond gets the jeep with Malcolm and they all get on the helicopter escaping Isla Nublar, and thus concluding the movie. Jurassic Park is a great movie to watch, and it has lots and lots and lots of rape play value. As a person who watched this movie since I was 4 years old, I can definitely say it's never gotten old. And each time I watch it, I always find something new that I've never noticed, like when the T-Rex knocks Malcolm back into the stalls of the bathroom. The characters are written great, the actors, oh my gosh, the acting in this movie is awesome. And of course, the dinosaurs, and the effects used to make them. All of these things are what made the movie so great. This movie deserves an ass. Definitely the best one of the whole franchise, and my favorite movie of all time, and forever will be. Thanks for watching this video on Jurassic Park. I'll be putting out more content soon, and the Lost World review will also be coming soon. So stay out on the look for that. As for now, take care bubs. Bye.